load. Depending on how I edit the video, y'all probably saw how much of an adventure getting that thing loaded was. I think, I know I was, and I think everybody had their doubts about whether the that boom truck was going to be able to pick it up or not. I told them a long time ago what my estimated weight was for the for that and their, the contents inside all together. One guy was like, well, that's kind of on the edge of where we can pick it up or not. The other guy was like, oh yeah, we'll get it. And of course, the operator at the machine, he knew what he was talking about. He was right. It was right on the edge of being able to pick it up. The problem was the boom truck, I think, had a, it's a 40,000 pound capacity or 20 ton but that I think that's virtually a straight up and down lift almost you know with the crane the farther they gotta lean out there to pick something up their capacity decreases and I knew the contents of that that whole unit all together was probably somewhere around 30,000 pounds so he had to get pretty close to it to be able to pick it up and through picking it up we figured out most of the weight was towards that one end and once he was able to turn the truck around he got the center of his crane closer to the the mass of weight you know the, the bulk of the weight was closer to the center line of his crane so that allowed him to barely pick it up man am I glad it did now when we get home we're going to have a better setup. We got a bigger crane that's going to be there to unload it. Should it'll lift it, no problem. Set her down and we'll be good to go. So let's get this thing home. Got her unloaded. That seemed to be a piece of cake for those guys. Give a shout out to Eric, the Eric and Gary from Panhandle Steel Erectors. They did a bang up job unloading it, but something like that, you know, that's a simple piece of cake job for them. They work. They do a whole lot more complicated jobs than that so i think this was a nice easy going job for them real piece of cake they didn't have to they could probably do that in their sleep it was so easy but what we got here is a refrigerated shipping container eight foot by 40 foot 
and this thing is going to come in extremely handy because this is going to i'm going to use this to store my any drawn comb that i have that's not in use is going to be stored in here that includes honeycomb and definitely any brood comb anyone who doesn't know the brood comb once the bees raise baby bees or brood in it it'll darken each time there's a round of brood in it and the reason i'm going to be storing it in the refrigerated shipping container is so i can keep it cool and freeze it from time to time and the reason for that is because there's a pest known as the wax moth in the beekeeping world there's two two species the greater wax moth and the lesser wax moth they both do the same thing they're really attracted to brood comb and the pollen that's stored in comb so what they'll do is they'll fly in there and they'll lay eggs those eggs will hatch into I don't know if they're larvae or what, but they're worms. So, and they'll, they'll burrow through the comb eating the cocoons from the old brood and the pollen. So that's their protein, their food. And then they'll like uh, spin a cocoon and then they'll metamorphosize into a new wax moth. So, and in that whole process, they destroy your comb pretty much render it useless and the bees will have to start over from scratch and build brand new comb and it takes the bees a whole lot of energy in the form of honey to be able to produce wax and build new comb so drawn comb in any form is extremely valuable to a beekeeper it's like gold so with that being said, I'll give y'all a walk around or a tour of this thing. Now, if y'all watched a previous video that I did, it was about buying sugar in bulk to use as bee feed. I'll link it here in that little black box right there. I mentioned in that video that I got all that sugar at a good price from an operation, a beekeeping operation not far from here that was liquidating everything. They were getting getting out of the business well I got this container from the same place got it I think it was a good price it's one of them things you know the seller probably thinks they won the deal and the buyer thinks they won the deal so who knows but they've already they were using it there's a whole bunch of boxes with frames and comb in there most of it's filled with honey kind of got it all as a a bulk bill all together kind of get a better price on it I think so let's so not only did I get the container I got a bunch of boxes and a bunch of frames and so yep there you go there's a visual of it got some newer boxes like this one I got some dipped boxes i think that's a dipped box I got some older painted boxes it's kind of a mix up of all kinds of stuff but it needs going through and uh, i need to go through it and sort it i'll sort the boxes and like as you can see i got some frames of just foundation basically and most of it's going to be frames of honey but I will not be extracting it and selling it because they told me a bunch of this honey is funny honey they were feeding sugar syrup to the bees that's what I think that's what most of it is actually so I'll be using this as feed for my own bees this winter and will not be just to be clear will not be extracting and selling it's for my bees to consume 
only. And as someday as I sort through this, I'll be sorting it as a few different piles. I'll have a, a foundation frame pile. Uh, most of it will be <clears throat> honey frames that I can use as feed this fall and winter. And then there'll probably be another pile that'll be brood comb. I want to keep it separate. I'll put that on the high, be sure to use all that up on the hives this winter. And then that way next spring, hopefully they have eaten through a bunch of it. And the queens will be either laying brood in there or hopefully if she's not doing that, it'll be open and clear and I can use it as open comb to kind of keep the brood nest open next spring. So, yep. And I think a bunch of these boxes are going to have one and a half gallon feeders in there like that one. I think a bunch of them up there are going to have feeders. So a little bit of everything that I need to go through and sort just to know what I got. And someday I'll need to if I can ever get this thing empty, I need to rent a heated power washer and clean out this floor. We got some old honey and stuff down in there. And junk, this stuff that needs cleaning out when I get time. So I think that's about enough for the inside. This, is, this whole thing's insulated. I don't know the thickness of insulation, but I think it's pretty thick. At least four inches, I think. There's that. These. It's not in perfect condition, but I think it's plenty good for what I'm going to be using it for. Here where the paint's chipping, you can tell these walls are aluminum with insulation inside there. And then up front, here's the heart of the whole thing. This is the cooling unit. And here's my power supply. Coming from that direction, if y'all didn't y'all haven't seen it there's another previous video I did that I'll link right here getting this it's all about getting three phase power supply out here these units take three phase electricity you can either have like a 230 or 240 volt supply or 480 or 460 I've got a 240 volt system gonna be supplying it. And it's gonna be going through, this thing right here is a transformer, an auto transformer, because the system needs 460 volts to run properly, I think. So it's gonna go through this auto transformer and then there's a breaker right here that I'll flip. If you're lucky enough to have a 460 or 480 volt system, you can use this cord here undo that plug and you can plug it straight up to a 480 volt plug which would be I guess a little more convenient but I'll have gotta do away with some of this stuff here tidy up the wiring but wire that straight into my panel here into this breaker so if i'm not mistaken this thing's rated to hold an internal temperature of zero degrees fahrenheit even if the outside temperature is up to 100 degrees fahrenheit i think it's got a tag at the back here i'll go double check that yeah so right there zero degree fahrenheit internal temp 
at a 100 degree ambient temp, which would be the outside temperature. So that's more than enough for what I need. I would just need to, all I would need is to freeze the moth larva out of there, which that would happen at 32. So it's just say, I'll just need 30 degrees for a little while. But with the potential to go to zero, I could use this thing for all kinds of stuff. So you never know what you're going to use something for. So I'd actually looked, done some research into buying like a, using a standard shipping container like that and insulating it and having a refrigeration unit mounted at the end of one of them at one of the ends but that was turned out to be ungodly expensive like astronomical to what i was anticipating and turned out got real lucky hit the guy up see if this was for sale and said it was don't know if y'all heard that but got some thunder going on behind me he said it was. I thought it was a good price. So I jumped on it. Because as you as I'm growing and expanding, comb storage was always on my mind. That was real pain. I knew I needed to have a solution sometime this year. Because like I said earlier, that drawn comb is like gold you can use it for all sorts of things that you can use it to keep the brood nest open in the spring and hopefully keep that colony from swarming it makes the honey production more efficient from a colony because they don't have to waste use that honey coming in they don't have to use it as energy to build the wax so you can get more honey production so I've said it probably two times now, and I'll say it again, drawn comb is like gold. And if any of y'all watch Cayman Reynolds in Tennessee, he says the same thing, and I couldn't agree more with him. So I'm gonna get this thing wired up probably tomorrow, and I'll have the camera to document that, and we'll turn this thing on and see how it works. Hopefully it don't blow up on me now that it belongs to me and I've already paid for it. I don't know if y'all can hear that thunder, but I believe I better go inside before it starts. The lightning starts. Got us some thunderstorm building up. I think we got some severe weather potential. Another cell over there. And I think there might be a chance for some tornadoes too. So better keep my eyes open. Anyway, I'll bring y'all back tomorrow when I wire it up and fire it up. So see y'all then. Got it all wired up to my breaker here. Now there's no power here right now. I verified that with my voltmeter before I even started. 
That's because I have the breaker that's supplying this panel turned off at the source. So we're gonna go turn that on and come back down here and turn this one on and see if this thing works. So I'll bring you back. All right, should have power down here. So let's start flipping switches and see what happens. So we'll turn the breaker on supplying power to the transformer. The transformer is gonna take my 230 volt or 240 volt service and give an output of the 460 or 480 volts that the cooling unit needs to run. Nothing bad yet, so then the transformer has a breaker on it. We're going to flip it on. I hear it humming. And before I purchased this, I did go and test it out. It ran, cooled, seemed to run perfectly fine, so... If there's a problem that arises now, it's going to be news to me. And there, we'll flip the on-off switch. So there's plenty of ways to turn this thing off and on, if you haven't noticed. It's waking up. Now we got messages on the information center. So it's going to do that two or three more times before it runs. I read in the manual it does that kind of to make sure the lines are purged or something like that. Now it's kicking on for good. And that fan should come on. And we're running. Not the greatest day to really give it a good test. It's a whole lot different than yesterday. We got, I think it's in the upper 50s right now with a stiff north wind. It's kind of chilly out here, really. Feels more like fall than being on the verge of summer. So right now, The air temperature inside the container is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Should be this number here. And the other one is the set point. We're going to take that down to zero. Just to test this thing out. Minus 17.8 C is zero degrees Fahrenheit. That indicator light there saying we're cooling. So like I said, it won't be much of a test with the outside temperature being pretty chilly, but we'll give her a run anyway, see what, see what it's doing in the morning, make sure it runs overnight all right. So I'll bring y'all back. Here we are the next morning. I'm coming out here to check this container. I left it running all night just to see how it would do. I went and checked it a couple hours after I signed off from the video last time. A little bit concerned. It seemed to be struggling a little bit to decrease the temperature and it was pretty cool outside, so I didn't think it should have much trouble cooling down inside. We probably got down into the 40s last night. Right now it's probably 55, so 
Let's go see what it's doing. Minus 12 degrees C. Let's see what that is in Fahrenheit. 10 degrees. I've got it set for zero. I don't know. So I've just been kind of standing here watching it, looking at a few things and probably 20 or 25 minutes and it's gone down another one degree Celsius. So it went from when we got here, it was around 10 degrees Fahrenheit and now it's 8.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's slowly going down. So I'll probably just give it some more time, check it later. May check it at like 24 hours since it's been running see where it's at then kind of suspect it's something it's not operating at the full potential that it could because it just feels like it should be down to temperature by now with as cool as the outside temperature is but I could be wrong but I figure the coils could need cleaning but I kind of looked at them they look pretty clean there's some debris on there not much might need to get the refrigerant level checked there's a there's a fan up top in the corner I believe that runs and kind of circulates air I may need to check it make sure it's see if it's operating at its full potential but I'll probably go ahead and make this the end of the video if I find anything wrong with it or if I improve the operation of it I'll do a update video later on but I mean at 8 or 10 degrees that's more than enough freezing power for freezing wax moss out of comb so no got to worry about that so there you have it that's my solution for the foreseeable future for storing and preserving my combs that the bees build keep those darn wax moss out of them keep them from destroying the comb just a whole bunch of benefits to being able to keep your comb in good condition so as for me as always just like everybody there's something else to move on to that needs doing so if like I said, if there's an update video to this, it'll be posted here at the end of this video. And y'all be on the lookout for what's coming out next. See y'all later.